All right, students, today we're going to look at calculating trajectories. This video is going to be specifically for looking at situations where the launch height of an object is equal to the height that it lands at. I will do a different standalone video that you'll want to use if you want to look at a situation where the launch height is different than the landing height. In general, what we're doing here is we're looking at projectile motion and the sequence of events for today is first we're going to figure out how we sort out the different dimensions of a two-dimensional problem like this. Then I'm going to go through and talk about a few rules that you can use to take advantage of calculating some problems and then we're going to finish with a sample problem. Whenever we say projectile motion, what we're talking about is this characteristic parabola that you will see when an object is flying through the air. You may hear terms thrown around like kinematics, trajectories, general two-dimensional motion whenever we're talking about this type of thing. Just different ways to talk about the same thing though. So here we are with these two dimensions. We have the y dimension, the vertical, and we have the x dimension, which is the horizontal. We can see how those two different dimensions make an appearance inside of this parabola. And that brings up the question for, well, why do we get a parabola in the first place? What you need, constant acceleration in one of your dimensions, and so in this case it's going to be our vertical, and the constant value is this negative 9.8 meters per second squared that we get from gravity. In the other dimension, you need to have no acceleration. That is, you need to have zero acceleration. The key idea that we're going to be dealing with is that you're going to want to treat these two dimensions separately so that you can simplify the problem and do some calculations. All right, what goes up must come down. Let's take a look at a stomp rocket for our example that we're going to be using. I want you to focus in on the velocity vectors. These are my purple vectors as they're traveling along. They change magnitude and they change direction as they go through this parabolic shape. The reality of this changing direction in the vector means that it is much simpler for us to look at this thing in its components. So let's only look at the vertical component and the horizontal component individually. Remember I can pick up a vector and I can move it somewhere else without changing the vector. I want you to mentally think of this image where I take my vertical component, I destroy my triangle and I move it over so that they all generate out of the same origin point. But I'm doing that so that we can take another peek at this type of diagram. Let's get rid of that and let's go ahead and put these new vectors coming up. And we can see how the components of these vectors are going to start to change as this stomp rocket is going to travel the course of this parabola. If I get rid of everything except those horizontal vectors, you can see for a little bit that these things are identical. They have the exact same direction to them. They have the same magnitude. That is the characteristic that one would expect if you have no acceleration in the horizontal direction. If we look at the red vectors only, those are the vertical components, we will see that they are changing. First they start with a large magnitude pointed up and they are slowing down. The magnitude is getting less until you reach that highest point. There is a spot in there where that vector goes to a magnitude of zero, then it flips back down in its direction and starts traveling down, picking up speed. This is all with our constant acceleration downward. So we've sorted the dimensions out a little bit. Let's take a look at some of the rules that we can put on this that we can take advantage of when doing calculations. Go back to this parabola and I'm going to only consider three locations on this entire parabola for this strategy for solving these problems. The first is going to be the initial. This is just after the launch, so we do actually have a velocity that's sending the thing up. We're going to look at the final. This is just before it hits the ground again, so it still has a velocity. It hasn't actually struck the ground. And then we have the midpoint. That midpoint is actually pretty special for us, and so we're going to want to know what's going on there. When you look at this parabola, you will notice that it has a vertical line of symmetry to it. We will use that to our advantage, as well as a few other things that we can always say are true about this particular path for the projectile. One thing that's always true is we're going to say we have a downward constant acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. 
through a symmetry argument, I can say that the time that it takes to go from the initial up to the midpoint is gonna be equal to the time from the midpoint down to the final position. I've labeled those up as T1 half, so half the time of the full trip, of the T full. Through symmetry, I can say that the distance that the stomp rocket travels up is gonna be equal to the distance that it travels down, at least with this type of problem that I'm doing. That means that if it went a displacement of 100 meters up initially, then when I use my equations, I would say it had a negative 100 meter displacement coming down from the midpoint to the final location. I need to take those negative signs into account. Whatever velocity you have up initially is equal to the velocity that you have down at the final, right before it hits the ground. So if it started with positive 20 meters per second, just in the vertical here I'm talking about, just the, that component, then it's going to end with negative 20 meters per second just before it strikes the ground. And also at the top, I can take advantage of a very special situation where the velocity in the y direction and only the y direction here actually goes to zero right at the top. So here are some rules that I can look at in no particular order. Let's start at the bottom right. And I can say that the time it takes to go up is equal to the time it takes to go down and both of those are half of the total hang time. Good to know. Acceleration and the y have been harping on this that it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared always. The acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. We don't have any acceleration. That makes the velocity down there really easy to deal with. The initial velocity in the x direction is equal to the final velocity in the x direction which is equal to the x velocity anywhere in that path. It's going to be unchanged. Number two in the y dimension is the thing I was talking about before. Whatever the initial upward velocity is, it's going to be equal to the, in, the final downward velocity at the end of the thing. Perhaps the most intuitive, the displacement up is negative the displacement down. Goes up 100, goes down minus 100. And then the last thing I want to say is that the velocity in the y direction at that midpoint is equal to zero. Those are helpful rules, so let's take a look at a sample problem and actually do some calculations. These are the equations I'm gonna use. These are all derived out of basic principles from Newtonian physics. Uh, we're looking at area under the curve and slopes to generate these. I'm showing you what variables appear in the equation and I'm also showing you a column of the variable that doesn't appear. Because as I am presenting things here, there are five possible variables that we're dealing with. Down in the bottom right, I have my simplistic x dimension where I don't have acceleration. All I need is velocity is displacement divided by time. Let's go back to this parabola and I'm just gonna provide some initial inf information for us to do some calculations. I'm gonna say that we have a projectile that's launched at 62 degrees from the horizontal. And I'm also going to say it has a total hang time of 4.8 seconds. From there, I have some things I want us to find. I want us to find the initial velocity that this stomp rocket was launched with. I also want to know how far the thing is going to go. I would call that the range sometimes, the dx. And I want to know how high it goes. What's the maximum height it goes at that midpoint? Remember, take it one dimension at a time. Whether you need it now or you need it later, you will have to split up the initial velocity vector and get some component vectors out of it. I always like to just do it first. So I make this triangle out of that off angle vector, my purple vector. It is made up of the red vertical component, which I'm calling VIY, and it is made up of the horizontal component, which is VIX. I can use some simple trig in order to sort some of this stuff out. I have my common variable there that I've highlighted and I'm going to solve for that and you're going to see that I can write the expression that Vix is equal to Vi times cosine theta. I can do a very similar exercise over on the vertical and I can find a similar expression except this time it's going to use the sine function. Now I have this thing just sitting there and I'm going to keep that off to the side. I'm going to need to come back to that at some point. Let's move on and do something different for a little bit. I want to find this initial velocity in the y direction. That's going to be the first task I'm giving myself. To do this, I'm going to select two of these three locations to compare to one another. 
I could actually select the initial location and either of the other ones. I'm going to go ahead and pick the midpoint. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I want to take advantage of this idea that the VY is equal to zero up there. It must take half of the total hang time in order to get out there though. And so I'm going to write down that T one half. I like to put that one half there so that I keep track of it in my own head that I'm only looking at half the time. That's 2.4 seconds. Let's go back to the equations that we have to use and I'm going to look at what I have. I always have my Y direction acceleration, negative 9.8. I have that my final velocity I'm calling it, but really it's the velocity at the midpoint, but it's the end velocity of the comparison between two locations that I'm making. I have that that's gonna go to zero. I'm trying to find the initial velocity in the Y direction, and I have my half time was 2.4 seconds. That means that's the equation that I want to use. So I go back, I put that equation down, I plug in the information that I know, rearrange the equation, do my multiplication, and I find that the initial velocity in the y direction is 23.52 meters per second. While I'm dealing with these two locations, let's go ahead and calculate what the maximum height is that this stomp rocket would actually travel. To do that, I now know a ton of information. I just need to find one of these equations that actually deals with delta dy, because that's the thing I'm trying to find. You'll notice that I could actually use any of these other three equations as long as I plug the numbers in correctly. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the top one. I know these three numbers that I've highlighted. They're the same as they were before. And so here's the equation I'm going to use to find the max height. I start with my equation, I plug in the numbers that I know, and then I get my calculator, I crunch the numbers, and I find that this object would travel 28.224 meters up into the air, maximum height. Now let's go ahead and look at how far this thing is going to travel. Now I have to look at the x direction. I'm going to compare the first location and the last location because again, if I want to know how far it goes across the entire trip, well my two points need to represent the entire trip, so the initial and the very final. But in my equation, I see that I have the full time over here, that's good. I'm going to solve for delta dx, that's the thing I'm trying to find, it has to be in the equation but I find a situation where I get a little bit stuck. I don't know the velocity in the x direction. I need to go find that. That's where I go back to this picture that we had originally. Remember, I actually know the velocity, the initial velocity in the y direction. It was this 23 number. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in to this equation here and solve for the vi that I'm highlighting. So plug in the numbers. I have my 62 degrees attached into that sign now. Rearrange the equation so that I can plug this into my calculator. I do that and I find that I get 26.64 meters per second as the overall velocity there. And that's a number I wanted us to find at the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and just use that as an intermediate and I'm going to plug in all this information that I know down here so that I can find the x component. Plug in the numbers I know, crunch the numbers in my calculator, and find that Vix is equal to 12.5 meters per second. Now I come back to this and I do have that number. So I only have one unknown in this equation. I can go through, there's the equation, plug in the information I know, and I'll solve. And I'll find that the total distance that this stomp rocket's going to travel is 60.0 meters. If I summarize the information that I had, that I've solved for, you can see that my initial velocity is 26.6 meters per second. I have solved that it will reach a maximum height of 28.2 meters, and I know it'll travel a distance or a range of 60.0 meters. Remember, these are strategies that you can use anytime you have a situation where the launch height is equal to the height that the thing lands. I'm going to do a different standalone video for you, so keep an eye out, that will show you some strategies for when the launch height is not the same position as the, the landing height. But for now, if you think you understand what's going on, let your computer know.